Okay, this is how I did it. Come on, I can remember. So we've got the five ending there. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. That's how I did it. A, B, C, A, B, C. C C A B C A B C This is not impulsive right now, okay? There's a little bit of kind of volume coming in at towards the end of this move. It's not very impulsive at the moment. Okay. Don't think that this is uh impulsive. It's when you're looking at impulsive moves, yeah, you're looking at this, yeah. This is, these are impulsive. See that? You want to see just market buying, non-stop market buying. That's what you want to look for when you're looking for impulsive moves. I'm not seeing crazy impulsiveness here. I'm seeing a little bit of kind of that's impulsive there that these two candles are. But in as a whole, I'm not seeing like, what well, is that impulsive? Yeah, it's impulsive, but it's not. It still looks quite corrective to me at the moment. So I'm just kind of measuring this out. I don't know. I think potentially we could come into the goal, to the point of control and find resistance. Yeah. For another move down. And then the caveat would be to flip it into support. Okay. And that's what I want to see. So if we suddenly get something else then whatever happens i want to flip 67k into support there's no point buying at 62 66 200 when your when your biggest resistance is a 67k yeah and so actually what you're thinking about doing now is a short on a on a on a rejection of six of the point of control we get a rejection of the point of control if it's confirmed as resistance again and so just mark the point of control on your charts. See, we've had a we've had a reaction the first time. Here. And we haven't had much of a sell-off. It was big enough. Do we get another reaction? Do we get another test to reject? Now even though that I wasn't looking at an inverse head and shoulders higher up, I am looking, I am seeing an inversion head and shoulders here. This is on a lower time frame. This is better because if we do go into the point of control and test it, could we make a, a right shoulder here? This is better because it's at the bottom. It is a bottoming pattern. And so in the context of this down move, yeah, if you see an inverse head and shoulders here, that would make sense. That's kind of what you want to see to form a bottom. And so in this context, I think this would make sense if this played out correctly. And obviously the next kind of thing that would need to happen here is for some kind of test. Again, on the point of control, um, it will be easy if it took out the highs and had a swing failure. That would be easy. It will be a lot more bearish if we had a lower high and couldn't get above the highs and had a rejection okay if we took out the highs then potentially we could be looking at some kind of bottoming pattern here on this kind of lower time frame and um and i think it's you know you've got this daily level here as well we haven't actually tapped it we've had a little bit of a front run here you can see that and so i'd like to see the point of control tested and whatever happens, you're not going to buy until you see a back test on the other side of the point of control. The point of control is really the line in the sand at 67k. Yeah, you could speculatively long it if we start closing above it, but just be aware that your invalidation is has to be tight because if we start coming back underneath it, then it could be a rejection. It could be rejecting. Yeah, so. Just bear that in mind. I think the point of control is the line in the sand here in this in the context of this current price action. Yeah. 
I'm not a hundred percent about this correction here. Yeah. I've counted it correctly potentially to here. This latest one seems to be right, doesn't it? Because I had it marked out W X Y, like some kind of symmetrical move here. And it seems to be doing what I'm imagine what, what I've kind of contemplated. Can this just fall into the daily level here and miss and be front run? Can the punt front point of control be front run here? It's unlikely, but I mean it's always possible. Or just a fake out. I don't know. Uh, and time based. Let me just calculate the time as well. Let me see where I did this from. Let's see. Let me delete that now because I'm not sure what that relates to. Let me let me delete. Get rid of that as well. Have it ending on one a one to one on that move would be Friday evening, late night. So I do I do wonder. I mean, if this is the question, I do wonder what's going to happen because we're at we're coming into resistance, and we still have a lot of time to go between now and the one to one of this kind of zigzag here. And obviously the 618 comes in today in the evening. So it's either today in the evening or tomorrow in the evening. Could this top out here at the point of control? If that happens and we have a rejection here, then this is the move, right? That is the move. And that will take us down to... And you just got to be aware of these moves because they're always a little bit more aggressive than people think. Yeah. So while we have support levels above us, the weekly level... Some kind of golden pocket, I think. Um, yeah, you see that? It's quite a strong confluence here with a swing failure here. You just got to be aware that sometimes the price can over move to the downside when it starts getting trending down and it can get really aggressive. Okay. But in effect, if we do get a rejection from the point of control, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, from there to there to there. Still doesn't invalidate our our first count. Still doesn't invalidate this wave here, this wave. And so actually that could just be a nice zigzag for an explosive move to the upside too from here. That will pretty much put people, um, could catch people off guard. Because once you lose this area, people, everyone is going to be really bearish. Yeah. And with the right reaction in this area of interest, it's a monthly level, weekly level, daily level, golden pocket. There's a lot of things going on here. And with the right reaction, it would still be fine because this is the wave one. You're just doing a zigzag down into an area of interest of high confluence for potentially the next wave. Yeah. You've lost this trend, this wave free trend line. Sure. Okay, but maybe this is what's going to happen. Who knows? Maybe this is going to throw people off guard. Whatever happens here, I think it will be a good buy opportunity because however this zigzag plays out, if we do go down like this, then the next zig, whatever happens, the next zig is going to be upwards. It's going to be an upward zigzag. So it doesn't really matter. Um, this is going to be a good buy zone regardless. Yeah, because whatever happens, if you're correcting, you could correct like that. And if you're impulsing, well, you're just going to impulse. So at the same place, at the same time, you're going to get a lot of people buying here in this area. If we go up to the point of control, reject and go down, that's kind of what I would be looking for next. Obviously, I'll be looking to see a rejection on the point of control. If I see it, I see a reaction. Um, don't have to catch the point. You don't have to be early. Yeah, if you see a rejection, you'll see it. 
Yeah, if you see a rejection, if you see the price is going up into point of trouble, rejecting and starting to come down, lose the daily level, you can short that. Go up into the point of control, reject, come back underneath the daily level, you can short that. That would, that would be pretty easy to short. It wouldn't be difficult. Reject the point of control, lose the daily level. You can short that all the way down to, to here effectively. That's what you'd, you don't want to catch it early. You want to let the price react. You want to let the price uh, guide you. If you see the price is rejecting and you see we lose the daily level next, that's a sign of weakness. And so you would short that and then your target will be the completion of this um, zigzag through to the beginning of the, the month, actually, July. That's kind of lands on time. And that's kind of will be the next move potentially if if big if if we get a rejection here if we don't get a rejection here so let me just kind of contemplate this now um wrong position okay i don't think short up and long gp Okay, so this is the other question. If we don't get a rejection of point in control, so in a, in essence, you're scrapping this combo wave, right? And here we're looking at something a little bit more complicated, not something that I, anyone can really predict. Um, well, whatever happens, you've got the point of control here. So you effectively what you need to see is you need to see the price move up probably take out this pivot here these highs and then just find support on the point of control you want to see that you need to see the price find support confirmation would be whatever high we've taken we put in to go back up that would be your confirmation that's how you're going to be 100 percent sure that the point of control has held the support obviously it's lagging in that context but i think if you if you do i mean you don't need to take out the highs that's the other thing but i think it would it would be weird not to if the price gets above the point of control so that's why i'm saying you probably take out the highs and then the other thing to bear in mind is if you do go up there and you take out the highs you could squeeze as well you could get a squeeze and you just got to bear that in mind but whatever happens i think as soon as you get a little back test on the point of control that will be your entry just simply because the invalidation is so tight you, once you reclaim it you're not you're expecting volume to come in you're not expecting people uh once you reclaim the point of control that's considered a sign of strength and that's kind of what you want you want to see a sign of strength and uh then you want to see an impulsive move and i think i think that's really important for people to to be expecting that if you reclaim the point of control as a sign of strength you have to see an impulse next we want to see an impulsive move it could start with a squeeze yeah so the first step in this kind of idea reclaim the point of control then you want to squeeze okay once you get a squeeze you're going to see fast moving prices it's it's going to look impulsive that's the move you want to be in and if the market starts to rally that then we could we could see a continuation yeah we could start pumping right it all begins with reclaiming the point of control it certainly doesn't begin down here because this isn't a sign of strength yet this is just a normal reaction at a place where the price has has a, there's a lot of uh, demand here because of the liquidity not enough supply and so we have a little bit of a a, a squeeze up but the point of control is really important because look, people are looking to sell that any big players looking to sell the point of control that's going to be the place what you have to be aware of here in this context you have to be very careful okay what we could potentially also see is a swing failure of these highs but still a rejection 
so it goes up you have a rejection here swing failure and the price just comes right back so it's like a fake out isn't it it's like the price pumps 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 takes out that highs but actually falls right back underneath the point of control for for a fake out above the point of control so you just got to be aware of that so what you really need to see is a back test on the point of control until you see that back test where people are actually looking to buy the point of control as support then you have to be very careful about longing and also especially if you see a swing failure of these highs it's, you got to be careful okay that could easily complete this corrective idea that i have for uh for continuation of uh of this and so you have to be careful right uh, but effectively what you want to see for bullishness is the is a flip of the point of control into support and then an impulsive move it has to be impulsive okay so maybe in the context here maybe it'd be better to not take out the high in the first instance if we can slowly get ourselves above it and then squeeze yeah maybe that would make more sense but i mean no one, no one can make that happen so all in all i think we have we're in a really in decisive moment and 67k is key all right that's where we are no one can predict what's going to happen i obviously posted this on uh, he's got this higher time frame harmonic it's, a, it's actually a bearish harmonic it requires us to hold here which we potentially have and it also requires um some kind of move up to about 80 he's got 82k at the 1.414 extension of something okay um it would have to happen quite soon as well it would have to happen basically by the end of the month for a down move i'm not i'm not sure about this to be honest with you i'm not very sure it's uh it's an interesting idea he's saying he's leaning towards all-time highs but he accepts that the price can break down i think exactly the same i think we could have one of both i don't think if we go to all-time highs in the way that he's suggesting that we're just going to have a rejection like that uh, no one knows but because he's saying it's going to come all the way back down to 48k look look at that effectively in such a short time basically in july he's basically saying in a space of two weeks <laughs> we're going to go from 82k down to 48k um so it's effectively just a pump and dump take out the liquidity from the highs i don't know why 82k i'm not sure why 82k um don't know so i'm not sure i'm not quite sure but i do like the idea All right has he posted anything else let's have a look yeah so he's still quite bullish here. he's looking he's in longs what does he say not really much to say here just the waiting game we either break out or we don't both btc and coming off some big local bullish divs i like i said i don't think it's unreasonable to assume that we could rip through all these highs pretty quickly if we break out squeezing out short so i'm not shorting my levels of course i can be wrong so if you have other plans i always think it's best to trade your own ideas so i think so he's basically saying he's not going to just short blindly which is smart and it kind of goes to what I'm saying here. You wouldn't just short the point of control. You'd wait for a rejection of the point of control. If you take out the highs and reject, it's even it's even it's a better confirmation. So this is how you would short. You'd let the price go high as high as possible. And if you take out the highs, even better. Lose the point of control. And then lose this daily level i think losing this daily level will be uh critical because that will be after after you reject from the highs and you lose the daily level you could short that then you could short you you wouldn't necessarily even need a high invalidation a wide invalidation 
because if you go up and you reject and you reject i think by then every no one's going to be buying everyone's going to be selling and so you can just catch it before the price starts to drop rapidly yeah it's basically you just want to catch it as it's about to drop and so losing that daily level will be the last step before the price starts to descend rapidly yeah and so you don't necessarily have to wait to catch the highs with a short and hope for the best you could just wait you could just wait for, to, for us to reclaim reject and then lose and i mean it'll be a lot safer and in the context of a potential move down to here it doesn't really matter uh it doesn't really matter if you come in at the point of control or the daily level yeah you still have a big move to the downside it doesn't really matter uh see seven percent down and then obviously to go up would you long here no you could but you wouldn't <laughs> because you're longing into resistance and so again what you'd be looking for is a reclaim so in the, in the context of where the price is now you're just waiting for a sign of strength a sign of strength here would be to successfully reclaim and back test the point of control as support and if you see that then you can long yeah and if you if you long in you get stopped out because the price rejects higher up and then it just loses the point of control then you can just flip back to a short and that's it you'll lose a long you'll but you'll be on a good short and it's fine this is how the this is how it works you know you cite you long strength but then you short weakness and so if you see strength you, you'll be looking for a non but then if you see weakness immediately after you see a bit of strength then actually the strength was a little bit of a some kind of fake out some kind of trap whatever and then you can just short that you wouldn't really get too emotionally attached to that trade just simply because we're at a really important area and it'd be quite easy to see strength and weakness uh, in the context of where we are now if this is impulsive then this corrective why is incorrect if this is corrective then i'll still be looking for a corrective why for a continuation to the downside yeah is this impulsive or not i just i'm not i don't think so i really don't think so we're getting some short squeezes here are we getting follow through not really not really getting follow through here you see that and i think you have I think if there's going to be any kind of impulsive move, it's going to be if and when we reclaim the point of control into support, 67k. So just mark that down. 67k is, is key. All right. 